So I recently figured out that consulting is a very frustrating business to enter into. Because every time you ask a consultant a question about their day-to-day -day work life, they answer with, it depends. And that's true. A lot of our day-to-day -day decisions depend on first, the project, and second, the client and their wants and needs. But it's also incredibly unhelpful if you are trying to decide if this is a career for you or what to expect once you enter into the career. For those of you who are new here, hi, my name is Sarah and I recently, seven months ago in January of this year, started my job as a data science consultant in a tech consulting company. And last month I actually finished my first consulting project and today I want to give you one example point of what a project and a day-to-day -day life of a data science consultant can look like. Before we dive into any details, let's talk about what the project was and who our client was without directly naming them because I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> so you probably have a phone service contract and maybe you also have a Netflix account and possibly you also have a gym membership. And what do all of these companies have in common? they need to collect monthly payments from their customers. And even though you might be paying your fees on time, other people don't. So the companies also have to send out warning letters and collect late fees and eventually terminate the contract with the customer. Now, because this is a lot of administration work, there are actually third party companies that offer all of this as a service. And our client was one of these companies. So it is our client's job to keep track of all of these payments and late fees and warnings, etc. But this also means that they have been collecting a lot of data about payments. And in the age of data science and artificial intelligence, data can be worth a lot if you use it correctly. So our client wanted to provide an additional service to their customers by providing them with an analytical dashboard that would give insight into how the payments are going, which customers are always late, or how the process of collecting payments in general might be improved. And that's what we were hired for to help them with. Now let's talk project parameters. How long was the project, how many people were on it, and how expensive was it? Okay, I actually can't talk about that last question. I probably would be fired and or sued. So sorry about that. <laughs> but I can tell you that two official data scientists were on the project team. So that's me and another colleague. And we also had a senior colleague on the team who was sort of supervising everything, but he was only there part time because he's also involved in another project at the same time. Now I did say that we were data scientists because we were the only two data employees on the team. It was a very small team. So kinda we also functioned as data analysts. Regarding the timeline, after some adjustments, the project went on for a little bit over three months. Now that means our goal wasn't strictly to get the whole dashboard ready and into production so that it could be used because that would be a little unrealistic. Instead, our task was more to give a proof of concept or to give a general idea of what could be done with the data and how we could present it and just see what kind of insights the data had. Now, for many people, if they hear data science, they might think of using SQL to query data from the database or using Python or R to do analysis on the data and get insights. But wait, and I mean that quite literally, because wait, we did. <laughs> and I don't mean to alarm you, but I've heard from others in the field that this experience in my project is not that uncommon. We had to wait a while at the start to get access to our first data tables. And after that, at regular intervals throughout the project, we realized that we needed, in fact, more tables or just more columns of the production database for our complete analysis. So during that time, I didn't do Python coding, I didn't do SQL, I didn't have any data. So what did we do instead? One of the first things we did was what we called a gap analysis. I have no idea if that is an established term or just what we call it, but there was an existing data report from the client and they weren't happy with it. So we looked at what they had done previously and what of this report worked and what didn't work. And we also compared this with the client's requirement. We had a document of what they wanted us to do. So we looked at 
what was already there and what could maybe be improved and what had to be completely redone to match the requirements that we were given. And what this meant in practice was that we created about three different Excel tables. I have no idea how many it were in the end. In this beginning phase of a project, it's extremely important that we and the client are on the same page. So we documented everything that we found and then gave it to them and asked them if they agreed with our assessment. The next topic that I want to talk about is my day-to-day -day work life. What did it look like? First off, pretty much all of the work was done remotely uh, out of two reasons or maybe three. Well, first of all, most of us are still in home office and it doesn't seem like it's changing anytime soon for us. Uh, the second reason is that our client was actually about 400 kilometers away from us. So it wouldn't have been sensible to meet all the time. Actually, we never met them in person. It was all done remotely. And the third reason is that we were a mixed team. We have different offices and one of our colleagues was in a different office than the rest of the team. So we wouldn't have been in the same office anyways, if we even went to the office. Now, one advantage of working remotely is that I was very free to structure my day. However, every morning at 10 a.m. we had our daily meeting. We literally just call it a daily. I think in the US people often call this a stand up. Now, in theory, this would be a very short meeting to just distribute the task for the day and possibly discuss any blockers or obstacles that you might have encountered in your ongoing task. In practice, these meetings often went like 45 minutes and we just did some general catching up in those two or discussed uh, preparation for our next client meeting or something. It just devolved a bit from the actual topic, which it was supposed to be. One of the client's employees joined us sometimes on these morning meetings, but regarding official exchange with the client, I think we did it around every two weeks. Uh, at the start, when we didn't have any data, of course, we didn't talk to them that often. And towards the end, I say it was every single week that we presented our progress to them and asked if we should do anything different. Before we had one of those exchange meetings with the clients, we often did an internal meeting to just uh, agree on what we would say or uh, prepare for this meeting. But if I would have to guess, I think aside from the morning meetings, I maybe had about two meetings per week on average. So not a huge lot. However, what the other data scientist and me did quite often was just call each other and just work together on a video call, especially after we got the data and we were trying to like figure out what it all meant and trying to go through some examples. We often did that together on a video call. Let's also talk about what technologies we use during this project. Now, this is one of those classic questions where everyone wants to know what they need to learn to become a data scientist. But this one really depends a lot on the project and the client. But in this project, we used Python. Um, this is simply because we know Python and the client also was using Python. So it was just a natural overlap. It's probably the most used programming language in the data science machine learning field. And since both of us knew it, it was just a perfect fit. Um, the language itself didn't matter too much because we were building a prototype and it would later be implemented in a dashboarding uh, software. So what the prototype is built with doesn't really matter, but it was just what both of us were comfortable with. We also used Jupyter notebooks or to be more specific, Jupyter lab in the browser. Mm, what else? We used Bitbucket and Git. Um, to upload our notebooks. Now, notebooks are a bit finicky to upload over Git, but we did do it on regular occasions just to share our work on the client service. Once we got the data, it was saved on Oracle databases and we used SQL to access the data. Uh, we did it in two different ways. First, we had SQL Developer, which is an Oracle software, I believe, to just rummage around the data and find what we need. But then to get it into our Python Jupyter Notebook, we used the Python library SQL Alchemy to get the data directly from the database into the notebook without saving it into a CSV file or something in between. Now, I also asked on my Instagram for questions you had. And one of you asked if we use Jira or Confluence to organize our project. The client needs to give access to their Jira and Confluence servers to us. So they need to create an account and give us access, etc. So this can sometimes be a lot of overhead for such a small project. 
In our case, we did use the client's Jira system, but only for very high level updates and not like every day. Um, one, because it was a small project and we didn't get full access to Jira. Uh, and second of all, we were just like a two people team. So it was just easier to just message back and forth and we didn't need the overhead of a huge project management system. So to summarize what I did all day, I would say during 80% of the project after we got the data and everything, our main tasks were to answer the analytical questions that our client asked and just go through the data and give preliminary answers in form of visualizations. So this could be like bar plots or other sort of visualizations of the data uh, in our Jupyter notebooks. So we had around 20 questions or something about the um, payments, etc., that the client was managing. And we would go through the data tables, see what data was potentially missing and what kind of answer we could generate with those tables and then build a visualization around that with which the customers could analyze their business. So our deliverables were really visualizations of the data in form of, like I said, a bar plot, line plot, uh, cake diagrams, what are they called? Pie charts, pie charts. So that was our main task, joining the complicated tables that were really set up in a confusing way to get all the information together so we could answer the business question. At various points throughout the project, we were also asked to give our estimation of how long it would take to answer additional or more complex questions. And then during client meetings, uh, our task was, of course, to present our findings to the people that would eventually work with the data. So these were people that were non-computer science educated. Their uh, task was just to report on how the business was going and how it could be improved. They were just looking at the numbers and the income of the business, for example. And we were then in a meeting to present our findings, get feedback and also answer any questions that they might have about the data and clarify things and maybe tweak the visualization so it would be more clear to them. So yeah, that's all that I can think of right now. If you have any further questions about my work life or this project in particular, leave them down in the comments and I'll see which ones I can answer without getting sued or fired. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.